Hi. Thanks everybody to be here. I would like to particularly thank the professor Jean-Jacques Van Den Heyn and the organizing committee for giving me opportunity to present my work in this first international electronic conference on medicinal chemistry that already received a great popularity among research community. The purpose of my today's presentation entitled Spectroscopic Biosensors is to assess the utility of infrared spectroscopy in studying biomolecules attachment to inorganic surfaces used in a variety of biosensing applications. Biosensors are analytical composite devices we use for molecular recognition detection. They consist in an immobilized biological material in intimate contact with a suitable transistor that converts a biochemical signal into electrical signal. Their principle is based on the recognition of a biological analyte of interest, free in solution, called the ligand, by another biocomponent called the receptor, closely linked to the transistor sensor substrate. The sensor reacts to this receptor ligand -like interactions and produces a measurable signal visually proportional to the bound biological molecules. Different transduction mechanisms can be applied to detect these molecular interactions based on the nature of the sensor support. Among those are electrochemical, which include potentiometry, amperometry, calorimetry, piezoelectric devices and the most commonly reported class of biosensors are used optical systems such as surface placement resonance uh, technology. The biological component in the sensors uh, may be enzymes, receptors, wool cells, organelles, tissues, antibodies, nucleic acids, etc. In addition, various mobilization processes can be used, such as entrapment, encapsulation, covalent binding, cross-linking, adsorption. In the old days, a canaling cage has been used by miners to one of gas. This could be considered as sort of biosensors, in that they use organisms which respond to toxic substances at a much lower concentration that humans can detect to warm of their presence. Such device can be used in environmental monitoring, trust gas detection, and in water treatment facility. The concept of biosensor was pioneered by Milan e. Clark, who proposed that enzyme could be immobilized at electrical detectors to form enzyme electrodes. Their work has offered the first commercial opportunities in biomedical science and healthcare with the introduction on the market at the end of the 70s of the glucose sensor. Future rearable biosensor will be as small as a petronal skin or even a tiny fiber suit into clothing. And these tools can gather new data in real time with patients in the real world tracking things we could not accurately measure outside the hospital until now. For example, you can see here different wristband packed with vibration motion sensors to track and analyze exercise, diet and sleep data. This data not only will provide useful information for the patients and his or her doctor, but could also lead to edge gains in precision medicine, an emerging field that aims to integrate data from molecular, clinical, population and other research to create treatments that are more predictive, preventive and precise. The doctor jobs of the future will be dramatically different. Growth in the field of biosensors has been phenomenal. When the principal journal in the field, Biosensors and Bioelectronics, was launched in 1985, it published about 30 papers that year, out of a total published in the world of approximately 100. You can see, for example, last year, more than uh, 4,000 papers were published on this topic. And this represents more than 10% of all papers ever published on this subject. In addition, global biosensor market 
is expected to reach more than 22 billion of American dollars in uh, 2020, following the capability to resolve various analytical issues in different fields, such as food and feed, um, medicine, safety, etc. The detection techniques used in biosensors um, can be broadly classified into label-based and label-free. Label-based detection relies on the specific properties of the labels for detecting a particular target. In contrast, label-free detection is suitable for the direct detection of target molecules that are not labeled. Contrary to the label-free methods, label-based detection method requires additional steps for revealing the ligon receptor interaction. How spectroscopic biosensors belong to this group. Here, a representation of inside spectrophotometer, you can find a source emitting the energy from a black body radiator, a sample, and a pyroelectric detector. Furthermore, inside a spectrophotometer, there are many other parts, such as several stationary mirrors, and for example, a, a laser to align the optical path. In addition, you can see the core of the spectrophotometer with a Michelson interferometer that is composed by a moving mirror, a beam splitter, and a stationary mirror. A Michelson interferometer is used to split one beam of light into two, so that the paths of these two beams are different. Then, the Michelson interferometer combines these two beams and conducts them into the detector, where the difference of the intensity of these two beams are measured as a function of the difference of the path. You obtain an interferogram. An interferogram is a function of time, and the values outputted by this function of times are said to make up the time domain. Time domain is for a transform to get a frequency domain, which is the combo to obtain a spectrum. Infrared spectrum provide useful information because Absorptions of infrared radiation brings about changes in molecular vibrations within molecules. You can see, for example, here an organic molecule. An organic molecule may contain quite a number of different bounds. All these bounds will be vibrating, and clearly different bounds will be vibrating at different frequencies. No two organic compounds have the same infrared spectrum and so individual pure compounds can be identified by examination of their spectra. Therefore, determination of the frequency in the infrared radiation which are absorbed by a compound give information about the types of bounds which are present. Atom size, bond length, bond strength vary in molecule. And so the frequency at which a particular bond absorbs infrared radiations will be different over a range of bounds and modes of vibration. There are two basic modes of vibration, the stretching and the bending, with different sub-modes. Currently, there are basically two modes used for obtaining infrared spectra of sample, the transmission and the reflection. The transmission sampling technique involves uh, passing uh, the infrared energy through sample and detecting that portion of the beam that is transmitted and to not absorbed. Reflectance infrared in analysis involves reflecting the infrared light off of the sample. And when infrared radiation is directed onto the surface of solid sample, two types of reflected energy can result, specular and the diffuse uh, reflection. Also, you can find the attenuated total reflection uh, called ATR. Uh, ATR spectroscopy functions to measure the change that occurs when um, totally internally reflected infrared beam comes into contact with sample. 
in the HR uh, mode analyzes uh, the sample uh, is blocking intimate physical contact with a special uh, HR uh, crystal. Biotechnology is a natural extension of our research activities, mainly because we are a multidisciplinary team uh, specialized in the study of interfaces and solid surfaces. Our complementary skills in weighting science, surface engineering and optical properties of materials has given rise to the development of original uh, spectroscopic biosensors. Paula started with the Bayer project that involved three uh, universities, um, three Belgium universities, UCL, ULB and UMOS. Its ambiguous objective was to develop high-performance general purpose sensors by using surface functionalized optical elements, typically a uh, crystal of germanium or silicon to detect receptor ligon interaction and quantitatively measure the concentration of bound biological molecules. Before applying surface functionalization, the sensor substrate must be sufficiently cleaned to remove all impurities. Then the clean silicon prism were hydroxylated in Pirana solution and after they were uh, copiously rinsed by deionized water and immediately dried under a stream of nitrogen. Finally, a very thin uh, functionalized organic layer was performed onto this hydroxylated silicon prism by a wet chemistry. In our context of FTIR based sensor, the organic layer covering the HR element has to be as thin as possible for optimal spectroscopic measurement. Hence, we use an overall fifilic acylonization reagent composed by a very short alkyl chain and a short polyethylene glycol chain. This uh, self assembled covering is stable uh, for several hours under a P phosphate buffer saline uh, flux. PBS um, and uh, features uh, protein repulsive properties. Finally, uh, the, gra the photographing of a molecular clip onto the pegylated silicon surface provided the activated HR device uh, ready for the covalent fixation of any uh, receptors molecules. Each pegylated chains are connected to each other via a carbamate link. This K function, although relatively hydrophobic, will be able to establish hydrogen bounds between the vicinal chains and so prevent water penetration into the resulting structured network. This hydrophobic barrier will be particularly useful for detecting uh, in complex media. As reported in this paper, similar effect could not be evidenced in case of the germanium device or silicon devices uh, grafted with a commercial polyethylene glycol uh, molecule because a surface etching rapidly occurred in the PBS flux. We have developed this robotized gantry as a spectrophotometer accessory. It is useful for repetitive steps in biosensors applications to automatically inject biological solutions in a flow cell while controlling a flow rate, temperature and volume. This device has been configured to allow semi-continuous flow analysis. Moreover, our biosensors has been miniaturized to be integrated into this powerful lab on a chip tool while minimizing cost of use. Before, only one experiment per crystal was possible uh, in multiple reflection mode. The new infrared element used is a triangular shaped silicon or germanium uh, crystal. Uh, with this uh, geometry, a single reflection occurs and 15 consecutive tracks can be used on a single crystal. You can see here the comparison in size between whole and new system. To illustrate the attachment of biomolecules to such surfaces, the model primarily discussed here is the avidin biotin coupling system. This model system is selected for its robustness and broad use in biosensing and biotechnology. 
The non-covalent glucan K interaction of havidin with biotin is characterized by a high affinity constant, the highest known to exist in nature. Its application in the detection of biotin with immobilized avidin shows that concentrations as low as 10 power minus 13 um, or, um, or could readily uh, be non-degrusly detected. Taking into account the molecular weight of biotin, this result shows that concentrations of 0.25 picogram per milliliter uh, are readily uh, detected by this method, method highlighting uh, the high sensitivity of our spectroscopic sensor. In this paper, we developed for the first time a strategy to allow indirect detection of small molecules. We focus on here on the detection of the dinitrophenol, well known to be a model for absent molecules. Competitive immunoreactions were carried out using several anti-dinitrophenol monoclonal antibodies and FTIR-ATR-based sensors. A series of inhibition tests was performed to probe the sensitivity of the detection method with respect to the couplet to the free uh, dinitrophenol two types of uh, tested inhibitors. Comparison with classical enzyme-linked immunosorbent assays in competition called ELISA uh, is given for standard operating uh, conditions. In the first step, a couplet protein solution was injected in the flow cell. Then, the flow cell was washed uh, with um, PBS to remove the unreacted excess of protein. After binding uh, the couplet protein to the sensor surface, solutions containing monoclonal antibodies and inhibitors were injected in the flow cell after 20 minutes of incubation of at room temperature. The absorbance of the sample is easily converted in percentage of inhibition by this relationship. Using this experimental scheme, three uh, monoclonal antibodies against uh, dinitrophenol were tested. The results uh, presented here clearly show that these antibodies respond in a different manner to the free or to the couplet molecules. In addition, FTIR detection limits are comparable to those obtained by ELISA, and the limits of the detection is about 5 nanograms per milliliter. We have developed and characterized a monoclonal antibody-based FTIR-ATR sensor for the direct detection of verukine A on environmental mycotoxin. Competitive ELISA and FTIR-ATR techniques were compared for detection of verukine A in buffer and also in complex dust samples obtained from dwellings. The binding of the developed monoclonal antibody to the sensor surface and its stability were quantified and monitored online from the FTIR intensity of the amid bond. Uh, the sensor surface chemically uh, reacts to with the primary amines of the antibody uh, to provide a covalent binding. In addition, as the coupling between the receptor and the surface requires the hydrolysis of the activated ester of the n succinimidine group, two negative bands also appear. After receptor binding, BSA at high concentration or ethanolamine was injected into the flow cell in order to saturate the remaining available bifunctional molecules. After a few minutes, the cell was washed with a buffer to remove the excess of protein or ethanolamine, and saturation uh, step uh, could also be quantified and monitored online from the amid band. You can see on this graph uh, that there is a small increase in the signal after the first injection of the terminated uh, primary amine molecules. Then the signal remains constant showing uh, that saturation is reached since the first injection. After the saturation step, the signal is very stable and the consequence is that the sensor is ready to detect the analyte of interest. A succession of experimental samples containing increasing concentrations of the analytes were injected in the flow cell. 
then the binding of the very claimed HE to the specific antibody was monitored using the infrared spectra around um, fletching vibrations of CH3 and CH3 uh, recorded after washing. You can see three different series of experiments related to the detection of Verrucane A recorded on different days. Plotting the peak areas observed during the binding of the target as function of the Verrucane A concentration gave a linear relationship using a semi-logarithmic scale for three series of experiments. At first sight, there is a low reproducibility onto the different lanes of the same soul. How to explain this low reproducibility? Clearly, the binding of the Verrucane A was dependent upon something. The three theories of experiments presented here needed to be normalized. Hence, we calculated the experimental normalized peak area defined as being the, the ratio between the peak area measured during the Verrucane A binding step in the CH2-CH3 fletching vibration and the peak area of the hamid bands measured after the receptor grafting steps. As the dotted points from the three series of experiments previously presented were merged together and the associated correlation coefficient of the linear equation approach won. These results clearly show uh, that the quantification of Verrucane A is directly affected by the quantity of re specific antibody molecules present on the surface of the crystal. In addition, the theoretical limit of detection was calculated according to the normalized threshold defined as being three times the standard deviation uh, of the infrared signal observed during the injection of PPS in the flow cell. With this threshold, the theoretical detection limits calculated on the linear regression were 2 picogram per milliliter of Verrucane A in PBS and 6 picogram per milliliter in the dust matrix. As compared to a classical competitive ELISA using the same monoclonal antibody, the spectroscopic biosensor improved the sensitivity of Verrucane A detection by three orders of magnitude. Moreover, it shows an impressive uh, dynamic range extending uh, over four orders of magnitude of Verrucane A concentration as compared to one order for ELISA. The sensitivity of the Verrucane A detection is minimally affected when the mycotoxin is spiked in an environmental dust matrix. The presented results clearly demonstrates that our original monoclonal antibody based HTRR HTRR sensor is a promising tool that could be translated to many other biosynthetic applications. Our high performance immunosensors are able to detect low or high molecular weight ligands even in complex media. Their combination with FGIR HTRR spectroscopy provides useful information about the studied molecules the molecular interactions and even the structural conformations. Thanks everybody for your attention. Uh, don't hesitate to contact me uh, or to visit our website if you have any questions. Thanks a lot. Bye.